Hello and welcome to another Chai Tutors video. In today's video we're going to be summarising the first act of Shakespeare's Hamlet. So Act 1, Scene 1 starts with a group of watchmen or guards, Marcellus, Francisco and Bernardo, and they are changing shifts. And Marcellus has brought Horatio with him because he wants Horatio to witness a ghost which has visited already twice in the last two nights this ghost has visited and the ghost seems to be in the appearance of the recently deceased King Hamlet. Horatio is a nobleman, he's a scholar, he's one of Hamlet's friends and he is quite sceptical um, about the ghost appearing. He doesn't really believe Marcellus but then the ghost actually appears and Horatio sees this for himself and so um, the, guardman, the guardsman uh, the Watchman and Horatio, they talk together and they try and figure out what this means. And the men predict that the ghost appearance means bad news for Denmark. So just to remind you, when we're talking about King Hamlet, we're talking about our protagonist's father who has been killed. And we're later going to find out he was kill killed by his brother Claudius. And the son, Hamlet, the protagonist, he is the one who is going to try and enact revenge. So just to keep in mind, the ghost is an image of King Hamlet, referring to Hamlet's father. And while they're talking, Horatio describes King Hamlet's rivalry with King Fortbris of Norway and how King Hamlet killed King Fortbris and captured his territories. So we are alerted to um, sort of the goings on in Denmark and sort of the history that leads to the current threat and why the guards are even on watch is because that King Fontebris' son, who is also called Fontebris, um, he is Denmark's new threat. So after um, King Hamlet kills King Fontebris of Norway, obviously King Fontebris' son sort of plots, had started plotting for revenge to recapture his territories and to enact revenge on Denmark. So that's the new threat that is upon Denmark at the moment. So that's important to understand for the storyline as well. So in Act 1, Scene 1, obviously there's a lot of and throughout the whole act, really, there's a lot of groundwork being laid in terms of the background that's going to become quite important as we continue on throughout the story. So already we have this theme of revenge coming through and we haven't even discussed the main sort of iteration or the way the main way in which this theme of revenge um, is seen, which is through Hamlet and his mission against Claudius. But already we're seeing this whole Fontebris storyline which is very interesting, as we'll talk about later, because of its parallels to Denmark's going on, goings on in sort of the political or royal family. The ghost then returns, but is scared away, and Horatio says that he will tell Hamlet, and he says he'll do it out of duty and out of love. So we can see that, that Horatio really does care for Hamlet, but also it introduces the theme of duty to the play and as we know from if you've studied any other Shakespeare plays you know that honor duty reputation all these important these ideas are really important in, sh in Shakespeare's plays um, in every society in which we discuss and every society in which we analyze within Shakespeare's plays the theme of honor and duty and doing what's right is very very important and obviously that's also going to actually link up to the theme of the theme of revenge but let me wait until we get to that point and then I can explain it to you Act one, scene two. So now we go back into the palace, um, into the palace um, in Denmark, and Claudius is proclaiming that while King Hammer's death is sad, things need to move on. So Claudius has become the new king after his brother King Hamlet has died, and he has gone and married King Hamlet's wife, Hamlet's mother, Gertrude, very soon after the death of King Hamlet. And so he proclaims to a group of people that, you know, now is time for mourning is over and we need to move on and sort of live our lives and be conscious of the threats that are sort of upon us right now. So we need to move on. He acknowledges Fontebris' threat and he sends a letter to Fontebris' uncle who took over power after Fontebris' um, sorry, after his brother King Fontebris' death. So we really have parallels to the Denmark, the Danish situation, Denmark situation, because King Fontebris was killed, and instead of his son becoming his son Fontebris becoming king, the power went to his uncle, to King Fontebris's brother. The same thing in Denmark, right? King Hamlet has died. Instead of the power going to Hamlet, his son, it has gone to Claudius, his 
Hamlet's uncle, King Hamlet's brother. So we definitely see those parallels. And we also see the disconnect between what Fauntibris' uncle wants versus what Fauntibris wants. And we're going to see that same disconnect between what Hamlet wants and what Claudius wants. Laertes, who is Polonius's son, who is very sort of high up in the court or in the world of the um, of the Danish sort of royal family, he's um, you know friend, very much you know friendly and a, an advisor to Gertrude, very high up within the within the family. And his son Laertes requests permission from Claudius to return to France because he had come from France to Denmark, back to Denmark for the coronation, and now he requests to go back. And Claudius permits this. Claudius and Gertrude then see Hamlet and they admonish him and condemn him because he is still in mourning. So he's still wearing black clothes and they're telling him he's being very dramatic and even unmanly to still be mourning his father. And Hamlet's absolutely like very angry. And Hamlet's anger towards his mother and Claudius is very much evident. Obviously, he doesn't know that Claudius has killed his father yet, but he's very upset at Claudius marrying his mother so quickly after his father's death and he has no respect for either of them and he doesn't he really wants to mourn his father he really loved his father and he doesn't see it as crazy or strange the fact that he's still mourning for them he sees the fact that Claudius and Gertrude have moved on moved on so quickly as extremely problematic and he's extremely angry about that Hamlet finds life meaningless and angrily reflects on recent events that have transpired and that's when, while he's by himself and he's having these reflections about what life truly means, I remember the whole of Hamlet is such an interesting in, an interesting play because it's Shakespeare's longest play. And really, to me, there's sort of two different elements. So you have the plot line, which we're talking about now, but then you also have a lot of like philosophical conversations and soliloquies where Hamlet is talking about life and the meaning of life and different aspects of life. So throughout the, the throughout the play, just make note of that. Like what's important for plot and then what's important in terms of just philosophical interesting things. But in the same way, those philosophical and those interesting things really do add to our understanding of Hamlet and his state of mind. So Horatio and Marcellus come in and they tell Hamlet of the armed ghost of King Hamlet that appeared. And Hamlet is intrigued. He asks him a bunch of questions and he says, please keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone that you've seen the ghost. And he then reflects that he thinks something must be wrong if, fa if his father's ghost is appearing. So something just to add is that I know these days we're sort of very skeptical about ghosts and things like that. But in those times, it wasn't seen as very sort of abnormal. It was quite normal to assume that if you if there was a ghost walking around, there was some sense of unfinished business. So it wasn't sort of as peculiar, I think, as what we would think of ghosts today. Scene three, Laertes says goodbye to his father Polonius and his sister Ophelia as he leaves for France. And here we have the introduction of Ophelia's um, Ophelia and we hear about how Hamlet has been paying attention to Ophelia and spending time with her. And Laertes warns Ophelia to stay away from Hamlet and he gives a bunch of reasons as to why, um, which we won't get into now. But um, when I do the quotes video, hopefully soon, I'll explain to you all those different reasons using those quotes and what Laertes says to Ophelia why she should stay away from Hamlet. Um, Polonius then offers Laertes advice as he leaves and some famous lines really come from there, from that advice he gives his son. And once Laertes leaves, Polonius then says to Ophelia, like, what were you talking about with Laertes? And Laertes says, and Ophelia says, Laertes is talking to me about Hamlet. And Polonius tells Ophelia off for spending time with Hamlet and thinking his affections to be true. She says, he's not being truthful. You're just sort of like a passing thing for him. You shouldn't be spending time with him. Um, and he really condemns her. And this is really important because this is going to develop later on. And Polonius really plays with Ophelia's feelings. And he really disregards Ophelia's feelings, which is really horrible to see. But in this scene, he's very, like, strict with her and very, um, you know, condescending as well. Because he tells her, basically, she's misread the whole situation. And that Hamlet's not interested in her and she should make herself less available to him. And we can also see this theme of sexism and gender coming in because of how Laertes and Polonius demand Ophelia does certain things, even though she's her own person and she could make her own decisions, um, Polonius and Laertes really condemn her into these sort of strict parameters and tell her off for being um, 
you know, for being careless in how she in how she spends her time or, you know, what other people think of her as well. So then we also had that theme of appearance versus reality because Laati has mentioned Stophelia. Look how it's looking to everyone else. It's looking like you've lost your virtue because you're spending so much time with Hamlet and that's going to hurt your reputation. So we have all these themes coming in in just this little scene between this family. Act 1, scene 4. Hamlet waits with Horatio and the guards for the ghost of midnight. The ghost appears but still won't talk and the ghost beckons for Hamlet to join him alone. The others try and convince Hamlet it's a bad idea to speak to the ghost alone because it's dangerous but Hamlet doesn't care. He sort of reminds them what he says earlier like life is pointless to him. He's really quite depressed but he lands up following the ghost anyway despite their objections. And finally, in scene 5, the ghost actually speaks to Hamlet when they are alone, and he confirms that he's the ghost of Hamlet's father, King Hamlet. He instructs Hamlet to take revenge for his murder, and he explains how Claudius killed him by pouring poison in his ear, and then betrayed him by marrying Gertrude. He explains how he had no time to repent, and so now he has to walk the earth as a ghost. So this is a really important piece of information, just to understand the sort of religious connotation of, if you don't have enough time to repent, then you... Um, sort of go into, um, you you don't re- go straight to heaven, right? You have to have a period of repentance. And this is pretty important for later on when we're going to see when Hamlet has the opportunity to kill Claudius and he chooses not to so that Claudius won't go straight to heaven as he's in the middle of praying. So keep that in mind for a later scene. Um, but we can see here how King Hamlet has been, you know, has been betrayed, how he's been killed by his brother and sort of um now he's you know in a very bad situation the ghost tells hamlet to take revenge on claudius so he says you must go and get rid of that villain take revenge on him but he warns hamlet leave your mother out of it so even though he feels betrayed by gertrude he feels more betrayed by claudius and he says to hamlet leave your mother out of it hamlet declares that he will act on the ghost's wishes this is quite important because we're going to see later on obviously hamlet is plagued by inaction and indecision right he can't make up his mind and he doesn't really act he procrastinates but in the moment he's actually very clear on what he wants to do and he says he is going to act on this and he is going to make sure that claudius um, pays for what he's done the ghost disappears and then hamlet actually refuses to tell horatio and marcellus what the ghost told them and makes them swear to never mention the ghost to anyone and furthermore he says no matter how crazy or mad he starts to act that they must not tell anyone of this night and this is a nice little piece of foreshadowing and it's a really interesting point because later on we're obviously going to see hamlet sort of go into this state of madness where he starts acting crazy and it's important to note that hamlet does tell them he's going to act crazy because at some point we're going to see we're going to be like hold on is hamlet acting mad or has he literally gone mad now so this is an important reminder that maybe he's just acting all along thank you so much for watching i hope that you found this video helpful as i said i'm going to try and make some quotes videos as well um and i have a video on some of the main themes and characters in hamlet which i hope you will watch as well to supplement your learning please remember to like this video to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one